Hello again, it's Topher, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. And today we're not going to be drawing, we're actually going to be working on a color study. And I'm going to explain a very important tool that is needed for you to decide what best colors to use and it is called the color wheel and I'm gonna we're gonna be doing some splotches so I have picked out some acrylic paints that we're going to be using today and we're going to be using white and black and this is Mars black and that's titanium white okay these ones standard for doing tints and tones then we're going to have our color wheel, which is going to help us a little bit. And I love this color wheel because it literally turns like a wheel. And it gives us a good guide of what we need to do. The other thing we're going to start out is with, and though this does not look it, this is crimson. And... Viridian Green, and Palo Blue, and Lemon Yellow. I also brought out two other pigments that we can discuss a little bit today. It's Raw Umber and Burnt Umber. These are nice in order to tone your work as well. So. Let's start off with the color wheel. So we all know, or hopefully know, what a prime color is. A prime color is a color that cannot be mixed in order to be created. So these colors are blue, red, and yellow. Blue, red, and yellow cannot be created by using any other color. But if you have red, blue, and yellow, you can create any other color just by depending on how much you place in so we're looking at our color wheel here and we're gonna flip it over to the back and we're gonna start with just explaining a little bit about the different terms used on a color wheel so the first one you see here is it's called a complementary color now this is a color that's opposite on the color wheel. This is also the color that is really good for using when shading. So in here, red is the pure color. The complementary color is green. If we turn our wheel over and we look at blue, now blue is the pure color and our complementary color is orange. Let's go to yellow. We go to yellow, our pure color, and our complementary color is violet. So if you're using the pure color in order to paint and do your art project, using the complementary color will help shade that color and in the proper in proper tone without it looking too muddy which can sometimes happen when you use the burnt umber and raw, uh, raw sienna or the black, the Mars black. So, the other colors that you have, it's called the triad of colors. Now these colors that work well together. So if you're ever wondering, I don't know, I want this person to have a uh, pink tone or reddish toned hair and what colors go really well with that. So we look at our primary color which is red, okay, our pure color. Then we follow here for the triad. Now the triad will tell us that red goes really well with blue and with yellow. And if we use red with our complementary color green, we can we can shade. Okay. Also well, let's look at the triad. Well, if the triad is blue, 
the complementary color for blue, let's switch that around, the pure color blue and orange. And we could also use red as, as, uh, as a shading medium, so that works. And so our, let's go back, and our secondary complementary color is yellow. So you, if you see here the triad for the primary colors, are the primary colors. <laughs> okay. And if we go to yellow, we see that violet is the complementary color. But for yellow, blue also works really well with shading. Okay. So the triad will also help as far as with shading as well, but to keep your composition color all together. Now you have two tetriads. That means that these are the four colors that work well together. And let's go back and go back to red. So our tetriad for red would be red. Okay. And so on here, we have two tetriads. Okay. We have red, violet, orange, blue, and yellow, green. Or violet, blue, yellow, and orange. Okay. So when you're deciding what colors and what paints to pull out, this really helps guide you. And we also want to talk about shade and tone. So as you see here, right underneath the pure color, you have what's called tint, tone, and shade. Now a tint happens when you add white, so it lightens the color. A tone is when it's a darker color, but it's typically you'll see this color when you use burnt umber. Okay. Shade is the dark of that, of that color where you would see if you added Mars black. So on the color wheel, if you look at this, it, it kind of helps you decide, okay, so do I want to use tints, shades, and tones, or do I want to use the complementary colors in order to shade? Now, on the flip side of our color wheel, da -da -da! okay, this helps us decide, okay, well, what is the color going to look like? Well, we know here that the complementary color of red is green. So, if we mix green and red, you see in this window here, it's going to show you what color it's going to create. And that's all, it's almost like a purpley, a purpley brown. Okay. Same thing with blue. If we wanted to know blue, and if we mix red with it, it would get that dark purpley. Okay. Um, well, then yellow, the complementary color on yellow, because I always like to double check, is, per, is violet. So, here we can go to violet, which is here, turning our color wheel, and by adding violet and yellow, we get a yellowish brown. Okay. This is nice when you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what is the color going to look like if I add this other primary color to it? And it really helps define what you're going to be painting. Now this one is wonderful because it also has the definitions, color definitions. Primary color, which is the red, yellow, and blue, and you cannot be mixed with any other colors or from any other colors. Uh, secondary colors, two primary colors together resulting in a orange, green, and violet. So orange being red and yellow, green, blue and yellow, and violet, blue and red. 
and then tertiary colors. One primary colors and two second color, secondary colors that are mixed together. Now it has other definitions here. One's called aggressive, and these are called warm colors. These are your oranges, reds, and yellows. I don't call these aggressive colors because they're not really aggressive. They are warm. They're depending on what you're what you're drawing and what you're using. These colors, yes, they make a dramatic statement. Reds and oranges are vibrant and bold, but they're also warm. So if you're thinking of drawing like a cozy fire, of course your reds and oranges make that that picture just feel warm and incorporating that into your picture will warm it up. And then on the other aspect, you have receding colors, and they're called cool colors. Now, cool colors are your greens, blues, and violets. And if you think of the Arctic, and where it's cold and freezing, and ooh, you think of ice. And ice will be blue, you know, for the most part. If it's good, nice, good um, glacial ice, you'll see that blue tint on it. But you'll also see hints of green. And sometimes you'll even see touches of red and orange in there. But the cool colors are going to make you feel just that cool, inviting. Water, water colors, cool, inviting. Ooh, come swim with me. Come take a bath with me. Ooh, I'm so nice and comfy. Um, if you're portraying something like one of my one of my favorite in the Game of Thrones, and you want that freezing element like those with the 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 walkers, ice is just a fantastic color and cool colors and you if you watch and you look at the at the tones that they use for the walkers they are blues whites oranges but also they're dead so you know other other colors so here they also have other definitions hue it's just another name for a color a tint it's any color with white tone any color with gray shade any color with black color key, dominant color in a color scheme or mixture, neutral gray, combination of black and white, intensity or, uh, or chroma, the brightness or dullness of a color, and value, the lightness or darkness of the color. So if you see here, right along the edge, there are 10 color values. So this is the color value of black and white. And if it shows you, well, if you add, here's pure black, here's pure white. Add a little bit of white to black, you get value two. A little bit more, value three, value four, value five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. With your tone, if you say you wanted to tone your red color, okay, well, here's red and black, and here's red and white. But our tone, if we look on here, the pure color, the tone would be here, and this would be gray, okay, by adding gray. Now, as I said before, you could also get this color by adding burnt umber, because burnt umber is a brownish color. And I don't know if you can see if I open, oh, well, I never opened this one. <laughs> and so, you can't see that the what the color is, but it's it's very earthy color. So let's use our color wheel, and we'll just do a couple of splotches here. So this is just standard watercolor card, and I'm going to fill my palette and. So another good tip when using acrylics is using extenders in order to lengthen the time that this paint is good. You could also use a little bit of water, but they also do sell extenders. Whip brush technique. Just pull up some black. 
put black down. So here we go and we have our original black color. Now with acrylics you want to use be very fast and you can add white to it. As I'm adding more white, it is going to different values. And if you can see, there's the different values in this. Doing this on the page is fine, but you can also do this in your palette. And with using, a, with using acrylics, it's actually good if you do it in your palette and you have a couple of different values. Our first primary color, and that's going to be red. So. Here is our pure color. As I said before, in order to shade it, we can use blue. And see how that darkens and makes that purple? Even just a little bit. That's nice because you have it's it's a pure color, and that's a pure sh a pure shading. So you can always do red if you want to tint it there's your white if you want to shade it you would add your black Now looking at this, this is, you can see the difference between these two colors. This is very dark red. It does have a red tone, but it's mostly black. This here, it's more of a gradient shade, but you still see more of the red. You still see more of the pure color. And that's the nice thing about using the complementary or primary colors in order to shade each other. Now, you also know that you've got blue and the yellow will mix together, will make a green. just by mixing them lightly. And green can also be used to tone your red. And if you see here, there's the pure color. There's by adding green, you get a a nice, very similar to by adding blue. Let's talk about yellow. And I got a little blue in my yellow, so it's there's a hint of green there. Now, in order to shade my yellow, if I look at my color wheel, its complementary color is purple, so. It's a blue and red. 
Got a nice little, little purple there. It's a little bit redder than what I... That's the good thing about splotching these out and testing your colors before you start actually using them on a painting. And of course, we can tone and shade any of these colors with white and black. Add blue. So we're taking our blue. And we're going to tint that blue with some white. Yellows, they do very well when you're tinting yellows. Yellow and white work really nice. Yellow and black, not so much. I'll show you why. So here's our yellow pure color. Let's give it a tint by adding the white, titanium white. And we get a nice lighter color. This is typically you'll find this as being sunshine yellow. But if we do the same thing and we look at black, and yellow, and we're just putting a very small touch of black. It doesn't take much. You can still see the yellow, and you may have to kind of adjust this a little bit. But it's more of a dirty yellow. So that's why taking the yellow and maybe adding the violet, you get a nicer shade combination. thing is the burnt umber. So when we're talking about burnt umber, and as you see that is a brown, basically. By at, taking your pure color and then adding some of the burnt umber get more of an earthy red. Of course you can still add more and more to bring that down. This using burnt umber and raw umber is nice when you're doing landscapes because you're, you're adding that earth type element. Burnt 
Okay. And hopefully you can see that does make a nicer, earthier blue. And then again, when you're using yellow, doesn't take much. But you get a warmer brown color. So besides burnt sienna, you also have raw sienna. And paintbrush is really loaded. That's more of a raw sienna type color. Slightly darker tone to the red. Yellow. It would really lighten up. And last of all. See how that's the tone of the blue. Still shines through, but it is shaded. And when you get a new set of paints, doing a color, just doing color swatches like this, in order to test out the paints, test out how they feel is a great thing. So I very much recommend that if you don't already have one, find yourself a color wheel. I got this one, it was a long time ago, and I don't really remember how much it costs, but they're not very expensive. You can find them in any places that sell artist supplies. So I hope that you like this and that you got something that you can take away from this and I really truly believe when coming to painting no matter what medium you're using acrylic watercolor oils even colored pencils the color wheel is a very very important and handy tool for you so thank you again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day Thank you. Bye.